This is the special address this uh, in honor of July 4th, I decided to do um, the international edition. Yes, this is partially because I plan on leaving the office early, uh, but also I, I wanted to bring in and get a sense of just how many people are kind of involved in our community that are not just in the United States. Uh, we've already seen examples of that when we've done address this I thought it'd be a little bit more accommodating and, you know, do this early in the morning over here in California so it was more reasonable time for people that are, you know, in continental Europe, in the Middle East and other places like that. Uh, one thing, if you are a typical uh, or a frequent uh, visitor in the video chat here on Address the we may be pulling you out. We're trying to get kind of a new batch of people in here. We mean you no offense. We're just trying to, you know, diversify, that kind of thing. You know, we love you, come back again, uh, but, but we're gonna try to do something different today. Uh, I think we have quite a bit to talk about with the ongoing saga of Microsoft, Xbox One, <laughs> and the departure of Don Matrick, but I also uh, wanna know more about Sort of what gaming is like in your particular territory, country, region, city, whatever it may be. Um, so uh, let's let's get started. Nick, say hello to everyone. Hello to everyone. And everyone, um, even though you're muted, say hello to Nick. Hi everyone. Well, yeah, we'll start. Let's you ready to start unmuting yeah, people? Yeah, let's, let's bring someone in. Uh, cool. what, what, one word of warning to everybody, uh, because it is uh, ten o'clock in the morning here in our office. Uh, there's a different type of activity, so you may hear strange sounds of grinding, crunching, and strange things being constructed. Uh, just bear with it. Uh, ho hopefully, it won't happen too much. Uh, all right, Nick, let's bring cool. someone uh, in. Cool. Let's open with uh, Hascara. Uh, all right. right. Down here. Hey, Hascara. Unmute yourself. You may have to. You may have to Hello. manually. Testing. Testing. Is it hey, audio? it's working. Hey, hey Hascara, where where are you coming from? Yeah. Greetings from Indonesia. Indonesia, awesome, man. Yes. Uh, are, are you in Jakarta or are you somewhere else? Yes, in Jakarta. I'm in Jakarta right now. Awesome. Uh, so I, I think this is my first question. I, I, I'm going to do this for everybody. And Nick, uh, keep, keep an eye on people that are in the chat. Um, how much does a game cost in Indonesia? It's basically the, about the same, about fifty dollars, fifty dollars US. Uh, oh really? Okay. To, yeah, about the same, fifty, sixty dollars. Because there's some of the nightmare stories, like in Australia, of just you know, sort of how expensive they are. Maybe that has more to do with kind of the tax rate and the VAT that happens there, rather than the shipping cost that, that is being incurred onto the consumer. Uh, the problem is uh, a lot of games here, especially uh, 360 games, are bootlegged. Which oh really? Is, yeah, which is which. Um, it's kind of hard to find original games here. Um, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, so like most retailers, like you don't just go into a store and buy a, a, a new one. I mean, is it, if you don't mind me asking, is it kind of like you're buying games from sort of an open air mall or something like that? I've seen rather questionable copies of games when I've been to Mexico yeah, City. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, basically, it's like that. Uh huh. What, what's popular out in Indonesia? Sort of like if, you, if you're playing with your friends. I mean, do, do, you, do you tend to play with other people in your country or do you uh, see more I usually sort of play, international? Um, I usually play play co-op co -op on the same TV, usually with my friends. Uh huh. Uh, what's, internet what's... connection here is kind of bad. Uh huh. <laughs> which I, <laughs> can hinder online play a lot. Uh huh. No, that 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 actually makes sense. Now that must have an impact also with PC games and downloading games. Is 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 is, is, is there much PC play versus console play? Uh, actually, PC play is. It's basically the same as 360. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the abundance of uh, original games here are based, uh, almost all of them are PS3s. Uh huh. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah because. Wh why do you uh, think? Because of the difficulty of bootlegging it, you know? It's kind of hard to. We've, we've seen the history of it, right? The, the history of cracking the Blu ray discs, right? You're right, because it is a unique format. Obviously, a CD-ROM, yeah, yeah. it's a little bit easier. People have had many, many more years of familiarity with, with, with that type of format. You know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, so so what, what do you like to play? Myself. I enjoy shooters quite a lot. My, I just replayed uh, Spec Ops The Line, which is okay. a great game. It's a really interesting game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, more, more psychological uh, rather than it is action-based. Right. Do, do you tend to lean a little bit more towards story-based games rather than... Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Story and gameplay, story and gameplay uh, for me, earn higher points than graphics does. And that, and that kind of makes sense because, as, as you pointed out, with, with kind of a poor internet connection, you know, you're, you're, you're probably engaged in more single-player experiences than yeah. you are in, 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 <laughs> I'm in more single-player. 
<laughs> well, you know what, Haskara, uh, you, you, you hold, hold on there, and Nick, let's, let's keep his All mic right. open. Let's, let's bring someone else in. Cool. Right, uh, let's go to uh, Shara. Shara. Shara, where do you hail from? Oh, unmute yourself. Unmute oh, yourself. Yeah, sorry. That's, that's our bad. No, no, no. I should have known better. So, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not interesting. I'm from Southern California. <laughs> uh, you know, I used to live there, so I'm, how's it going? I heard it's kind of hot. I imagine it's hot in Jakarta, too. Is that correct, Ascara? You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Sarah, um, uh, since you uh, are, are in, 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 in lovely Southern California, um, I imagine, and, and uh, Ascara, I, I imagine this is true for you too, and feel free to chime in. Um, what have you made of the even newer, more recent developments with, with Don Matrick leaving Microsoft? Do you see it as a good thing, something that concerns you, or I could care less? Um. I think it's interesting, to say the least. Um, New Blood, I think, is always very interesting to see who's going to come in and take over and how things are going to change, especially the way that the industry is going. So it's, uh, for me, it's really interesting to see um, who they're going to bring in and what that background is going to bring and what that's going to bring to the table because all the uproar that's been going on, um, I think that's a... a an interesting decision. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I, I think the question <laughs> remains, whose decision was it? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> where, where are you inclined right now? Are you thinking about getting a new console? And if so, which one? Um, yeah, you know, my, my boyfriend actually has already pre-ordered the PS3. So, uh, excuse yeah. me, 4. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm a huge RPG fan. So, for me... PlayStation kind of has a better market. Also, huge indie game game fan. Okay, well that so, yeah, I mean, that should be. I mean that yeah. That's it. Obviously, yeah. Sony looks way better when it comes to the indie game. Yeah, game, exactly. So. so we're 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 PC and uh, and PlayStation household. We both actually have. 360s. <laughs> we have yeah. lots of consoles. <laughs> no, that's how you maintain a strong relationship. That's right. That's right. <laughs> nice yes, yes. Maybe my wife is watching right now, and she'll get some hints. Uh, <laughs> I heard she helps you with your pants, though. Oh no, no, no! I mean, my my, my, my ability to function is fully predicated on the assistance my wife grants me, uh, except when it comes it. to games. She just kind of sat by helpless while she watched me go through God of War Ascension, and I was incapable of getting past the Trial of Archimedes. That was a. Uh, that was a trying time. Hey, Hescara, quick question. I mean, yes. are, is, is, yes. is get, getting a new console something you're even considering? I mean, is that even going to be sort of possible because you're not <laughs> – I mean, I, I, I have no idea if the PS4 or if the Xbox One is kind of lo looking uh, at Indonesia as a territory for launch. Well, the PS4 has a lot of fans here. So I guess a lot of my friends are considering on getting a new console. I mean, but for me, I'm more focused about – Getting some stuff for work, you know, a new camera, some lenses. <laughs> uh, hey, what, 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 what do you do for a job? I'm, I'm not uh, so much of, uh, of a gamer, but I do play uh, if I have the time. All right, all right. All right, Nick, let's, let's let this go ahead and bring someone in. Let's just fill this out and keep everyone mic'd. Yeah, and everyone, sure. feel, feel free to jump in if you have some thoughts or things like that. All right. Let's all right. talk to a guy who is going by the alias Awake Island. Hello there, Awake Island. Uh, my name is Glenn. How's it going? Hey, G'day. How are you doing? Where, where, where are you joining us from? Uh, from Australia. Nice. Oh wow! Isn't it really <laughs> late at night over there? Yeah, I was about to say. I can't remember. Yeah, that. I don't. I don't have anything better to do tomorrow. So I'm <laughs> well, it's midnight here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like two two forty a.m. I think now. So yeah, I I I love how I tried to design this to accommodate Europe, but right now we have a guy <laughs> we have everyone from the other side of the international date line. Yep, yeah. in Southern California. With all very <laughs> good. Next time we'll do it at three a.m. our time. That'll fix it, right? That'd be sweet. Yeah. Man. That'd be great. So uh, Clinton, uh, Sentra Four. They're gonna have to change it for the Australian sensors, even though they finally had the eighteen rating. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I'm, I'm not really too worried because I just don't really care about a fucking alien probe. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I, whatever. Um, I, I guess a lot of other people, I guess, in our country are pretty pissed off by it. I, I guess because we just an R18 rating and all that. Is, 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 is there a very contentious relationship sort of between the gaming community and this, this, this board that seems to be the most aggressive of, of uh, sort of, 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 a, of a, at least of a Commonwealth country? Uh, yeah. in, in terms of sort of taking stuff off the market. 
Yeah, it's just a bunch of people just randomly selected or something. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, we used to have like a we used to have a problem because you had to have all the states to kind of agree on it, and uh, we had a, a local member down here that was actually physically blocking it because he was an attorney general, and uh, yeah, it, it was quite contentious for a while. We even had a political party start up to try and. Uh, get it overturned and all that, and now it's all done. I think people are just sick of it now. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting because I become aware that you know, for the population of Australia, it's an inordinate percentage of people are really, really avid in gaming, and it's a very, very yeah, important yeah. market for we, game publishers. We have a really good middle class and like a lot of sort of expendable income and stuff. Uh, we have pretty comfortable lives here, so um, I don't even think the recession really hit us very badly. So I think. That in that terms, like uh, as a market, you know, we're really probably. You know, I was I was I was out in Sydney about a year ago, right now, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, you 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 seem to have a healthy economy because damn, it was expensive. Yeah, also, yeah. Um... <laughs> drinks the the pores for drinks there are so stingy it boggles my <laughs> mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Isn't there a thing in Australia where like in order to sell alcohol you have to technically be a hotel? So like some places will have a. Yep. A bed, like a like a mattress in a closet, to technically like <laughs> qualify. No idea, but we can drink when we're eighteen, which is probably not the greatest idea. But yeah, yeah see, now you're making everybody stateside feel very, very jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey Nick, but before we bring somebody else in, um, how about we uh, see how people are doing in the chat out there? Oh what yeah, is... we've got a, a bunch of um, a bunch of questions in the chat that are uh, a lot of. It still feels like a lot of that uh, that post E three. Uh, Sort of like, like for example, so uh, weeks ago. I don't understand right. what this whole. Is. I mean, hey, I'm over it. But, um, no, uh, Rainer Santana on Google Plus says, uh, with all the focus on multiplayer games and new MMOs like Titanfall and The Division, which I'm sure they'd argue that they're not, but whatever, um, is the single player campaign dead? Uh, no. And what's the, the way what, what we saw with Titanfall, what we saw with uh, The Division, I'm glad this came up because this kind of folds into, I don't know how many of you guys are aware of the Game Critics Association. Uh, they just, and I was a part of it, I was a judge, announced Titanfall as the game of E3 and it won many, many categories. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a little bit of confusion about sort of why one game was there and one not. Um, the games had to be made available to be played to the judges. The Division... The Witcher Three and all that stuff uh, were were not presented in that fashion, and hence they were ineligible. Uh, one of the things that became apparent um, in that process is that in sort of that those small slices that they're presenting, that was more demonstrative of gameplay. And it seems that there is a strong narrative that is going to be included in Titanfall and definitely in the Division. A lot of game companies, when they're showing it, they either haven't decided on everything in the story, or they don't want to spoil anything. That's usually what they say. Um, I think that what we're going to see is we're going to see single player, we're going to see narrative, but the way in which we engage with narrative may be opened up and that there will be sort of multiplayer elements, but they won't be that kind of very kind of clear dividing line between when you're playing single player and when you're playing multiplayer and that they'll slowly merge. I think some of the best examples of that was Need for Speed Rivals and The Crew, that racing game from Ubisoft where you are really sort of playing yourself and then you'll be playing with other people with the option if you want to, if you have your friends in that world and how you're engaging with it. I personally like that because I multiplayer stresses me out because if I commit to time playing with my friends, I feel I'm now obliged. So what if I have to go to the bathroom? What if suddenly I have a phone call? What if I have a meeting? The, the, the way that we engage with multiplayer now doesn't really conform well to adult existence. Right. And the idea that the multiplayer happens as a matter of course really makes it a little bit easier to both get into it and to get out of it. Uh, yeah, I'd love I, to hear everyone's thoughts on I that. I love the idea like, on that, but I also wonder how it, like, like for Ascara, like, if, I wonder how this will affect people whose internet connections are not totally reliable. Like, it seems like at a certain point this will get in the way of enjoying a game as a single player. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of, I mean, a lot of games now incorporate multiplayer as part of the experience, right? Uh, online multiplayer is part of the experience. And it kind of sucks when you can't access multiplayer because yeah, of right. the uh, internet infrastructure. And Adam, like and, you were saying, it's stressful. It adds that stress component for me. I don't necessarily want to play with other people because either... Well, okay, let's be honest. I'm worse than everyone else, so I'm just there sucking and dying all I'm the time. I'm, 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 I'm with you, and you know what? I think 
what will be afforded in this, and I, I'm speculating here, you'll have a greater degree of anonymity and there won't be as much of a requirement to be in conversation with other people. So, I mean, that, 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 that's kind of how I'm picturing it uh, because I, I agree with you. I am not that skilled at multiplayer. One of the no. huge issues when you're in a, a position like mine is I have to kind of try to play every single game. That means I can't be that good at most games. Right. And multiplayer is something you get good at when, you, when you're like, that's my game. I play it that's over time. Right. I get really practiced at it. So I am absolutely sympathetic <laughs> to, to, to Yeah, to I'm not good at anything. I tell people I'm the jack of all trades of video games because I will play a game, this game, this game, this game, but I've never really even finished a game. Oh, so wow. I suck at everything. Yeah, I, I have that kind of neurotic hang-up where I can't play another game until I finish one, even if I don't like it. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's a large kind of debate and frustration I have with myself to finally say, like, okay, this game is not fun. I need to put it away before I finish it. I, wonder, I, I, I saw you trying to jump in there. so I, I, I wonder what it will do for game preservation. Um, if all these games are online and they're using servers and they need servers to work, um, what are they going to do in 10 years when we want to play Titanfall again or something and it's offline? Um, you know, I can play Metal Gear Solid 1 or something now, but uh, if it was all online or something, you know, because they're all trying to use it for DRM, what would I, what would I do, you know, 10 years later? Uh, well, I just wonder how that would work. The, the way I see it, and that's a really valid point, I, I like how you phrased it more as preservation rather than, what if I can't play my game? <laughs> I, 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 I yeah, really yeah, yeah. appreciate that. Because game preservation <laughs> yeah. is something I'm, I'm really concerned about because mm. we need to have a catalog in the library. The size of that game, if we're looking at sort of what Microsoft is claiming to have with their cloud and what Sony is you know, going to have with Gaikai, that's not a huge amount of server space just to preserve the digital copy. In terms of, you know, and I, I, I don't know how big this is and what, what kind of a, a imposition it is that, you know, to maintain that server support, but I think when we're looking at, at plans as ambitious as that, and I think especially with Microsoft, I, I imagine this with Sony as well, that that cloud will have applications that, ex that, that, that are outside of games, that we're looking at a reality where we're just going to have to see more and more servers building on, and it's not sort of that you know more 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 narrow look at things that you know okay no one's playing Titanfall anymore so 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 we're going to yank it. Um, so I'm not but, the only one that thinks the end of the world is going to happen and then all the servers are going to be gone and I can't play my games. Anymore. Yeah, like <laughs> okay, so many video games if, if have the a the world part. ends, game playing will be the least of your worries. Okay, <laughs> I just yeah, I like Mad Max. Up on the desert yeah. island needing it. <laughs> In the Mad Max world, they weren't like, hey, let's let's, let's sit down and play checkers. It was kind of like shit. I got to shoot people. So, yeah, I'll probably be dead before, it's, just, yeah, exactly. it's hard when every Call of Duty game has a scene where like an EMP bomb goes off and all the power goes out because now we're in a world where when that happens, like, I don't, it's just it's yeah, our our, really, our connection to our games is so tenuous. Like, you can't give your games to your kids after like Nick, you die or whatever. If all the power goes out, the connection to my food becomes tenuous. That's what my concern is going to be coming from. Uh, Clinton, quick quick question. Uh, word yeah. just came out that they're finally going to give an Australian accent to Mad Max in the Mad Max game. Oh, that's I, 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 was, yeah. I, I was wondering how sort of as an Australian native, and obviously that's one of the most well known pop culture exports. Mm. What the mm. reaction was of sort of the the deossification of Mad Max. Well, the Australian-based sites that I've been reading seem to be pretty pleased about it. Um, the only thing I was worried about is probably... Uh, I was just worried about the guy losing his job who I was doing the voice initially. I was like, oh, <laughs> you're very bad for him. <laughs> 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 I was so even thinking about him. <laughs> let's let's, let's uh, bring, bring let's in somebody. Smoking. Yeah, Wait, sure. Let's, uh, let's bring in Eve. Um. Hey, Eve. Uh, hello. Hey, how are you? Where are you from? Yeah. Brazil. Brazil. Awesome. Um, we still can't get anyone from continental Europe. I'm, I'm kind of finding this to be one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen happen. Um, <laughs> how, how is it going in Brazil? Fine. Uh, I think everything fine. Everything's gearing up for World Cup and then the Olympics? And sort of. Uh, we have uh, uh, riots over here because yeah. of that and because uh, of the, the bus. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was noticing that. Yeah, there was some le legitimate anger out there in the streets in both Sao Paulo and and, and uh, Rio de Janeiro, among mm -hmm. other places. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I actually have a good friend who's Brazilian. He now lives here in the states. He loves Call of Duty on a level that is almost um, astonishing. And I was curious, just from your take, what is sort of the popular game platform and the games out there in Brazil? Uh, is FPS, Call of Duty, Battlefield, but 
we love soccer, so FIFA, Pro Evolution Soccer. Yeah, that makes know. sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that just like, be, be, because of the affection for soccer and FIFA, um, does that change what systems people play on? Because Sony has always been seen as a little bit more friendly yeah, towards yeah. EA's FIFA franchise. And uh, uh, everybody plays uh, soccer on PS3, but we have uh, uh, people that play on Xbox, but soccer is on, on PS3. Yeah, and then how much PC games uh, are, are played there? Uh, a lot. That, like uh, some of my friends, they if they have a choice to play on PC, they play on PC. They, they and, don't and, play on, on the other costs because of uh, graphics and etc. Now, I, I would assume because of what you're describing that the, the internet infrastructure in Brazil is pretty strong, or at least in the major cities. Uh, in the major cities, I live in a state called Ceará, and yesterday my internet connection lost five times. So, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, my internet connection is not great. So you guys talking about uh, Gaika and other stuff, I, I'm really afraid, really afraid of the, yeah. of the internet connection because... Uh, I love multiplayer games if they fun, but it's not my first choice because of my internet connection. I mean, you, 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 you sound like you're in a similar situation to Haskara over there in Indonesia. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and the same price Maybe because and the same price because uh, the Xbox One is gonna be, I think, a two thousand reais. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Uh, are, are you able to kind of put that in perspective of what that might mean in dollars or pounds sterling? Oh, it's, it's, it's difficult, but I think and one real is two dollars. Okay, uh, so, well, that, okay, that's still a thousand dollars. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, so uh, it's uh, very expensive. Saskara, how much do you think an Xbox One or a PS4 would cost in Indonesia? Well, the, th the 360, when it first came out, it was about $1,100. And that $1,100, you know, I, 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 yeah. forgive me, I can't remember the currency in Indonesia. Is that Indonesian dollars or is that American dollars? No, no, in U.S. dollars. I'm wow. using U.S. Wow. It's, it's okay. if I, For all know. the Yanks that are on this, think about all the whining. We have about $60 games <laughs> and, and the $500 price tag on the PS1. My <laughs> Lord. Uh, Clinton, I, I, I know that there's a large, that there's kind of an increased price in Australia. What's Xbox One and PS4 going to go for? I think uh, PS4 is 549 and the Xbox is 600 And that's and that's Australian mm -hmm. dollars? Australian dollars, which is which, parody to the U.S. as far exactly, as I'm aware. Exactly, it, it is parody. Wow, okay. Um, a, lot of people, a lot of people complain here, but we, you know, we have a really, we're a really lucky country, so I, I don't really understand why. <laughs> listen, listen, like, listen to this wonderful national pride from, from <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> Let's all move. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everyone, Hi, you're you're welcome. As long as they can pour a stronger drink. Um, <laughs> hey, Nick, you want to bring somebody else on? <coughs> Nick, we lost you. Uh, you I, I think you're muted there. Yes, unmute yourself, Nick. Hey, Jason. Hey, where are you from? Ooh, I think we lost your audio there, Jason. Are you muted? Oh, Jason, we're done. We're not getting the audio. Hey, Nick, you want to grab someone in? Is Jason trying to kind of work on that? There we go. Ryan. Ryan. Uh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Oh, God. It's, 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 well, I, I, <laughs> there we go. There we go. I was thinking I should unmute, but then when the moment Maybe. happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a pleasure. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. But first off, it's a pleasure to speak to you, Adam. Oh, thank I've you been so following much. you on X-Play and all that for probably a little more than a decade now. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing it for unfortunately more than a decade. So <laughs> I think you got the good part. The yeah. first five years, not my best. So I'm, I'm glad you started <laughs> after we got a rhythm going. Um, where, 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 where are you joining us from? Uh, Syracuse. Syracuse, New York. Awesome. Yep. It's a beautiful, beautiful area when it's not winter. Um, <laughs> Syracuse, the only place in the country that experienced all the seasons in one day. 
Yeah. <laughs> Actually, San Francisco can get like that as well, strangely enough. And yeah, what's what's on your mind? Have, have, have you joined us with a, with a pressing need or an issue or a matter to discuss? Uh, not really. I haven't really been uh, following too much games during the past, uh, I want to say almost week now, because I've been busy with other stuff, been gone, hanging with friends I haven't seen in ages. Matrix added uh, Microsoft. That's about all. Yeah, I heard about that, but I didn't read up on that. Yeah, I mean, there were there really nothing else that big happened this week. Uh, it just happened to happen right after I did a Cessna or something, saying, well, I guess nothing happened. And I taped that last Friday, <laughs> and then had to kind of, like, crow on that one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as, as you've listened to sort of our, our, our international discussion, has, has it affected your, your, your opinion of what it means to be an American and sort of having access to games at a certain price and a certain availability with certain internet? At first, like, with being at certain places, you know, the Internet's not usually the best. Mm -hmm. But then after hearing about them, all your cases, I, I feel bad for you, and I hope uh, sometime in the near future you can get better reliability. Oh. Um, you know, one of the things, sorry, guys, the uh, president of the network was right there waving, and so I had to oh. wave back. <laughs> Hello there, Jim. Uh, we, are, we, have, we currently have an entire international lobby of people here for Address the Sess, which we're doing in honor of the 4th of July. <laughs> The they need to be nice. Yes, apparently you guys need to be nice, which all of you are. Uh, one of these days I'm going to find that guy. Thank you. Um, that one. So, uh, where was I? Oh, that, yeah, I have to say that really on kind of, kind of a global world peace type level, I mean, the, the Internet and the availability for communication, I, I wish there was more of a, of a proper global initiative for countries like, you know, uh, Indonesia for kind of, you know, the non-urban regions of Brazil, to get that internet structure in there, I mean, it just, it, it really is kind of almost mind-boggling how that would suddenly change, like, the, 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 the economy and, and that sense of connected. I mean, we, we think about the connected world, but it really is only a small portion of that world that really is seeing and getting the benefits mm -hmm. of that, that, that level of connectivity. I, I think we're getting a pretty good demonstration of that today. Uh, with that in mind, hey, Jason, do you think, uh, how are we on your audio issues? Yeah. Still don't gotcha. Sorry, man. Hey, Nick, uh, do you want to throw a question from the chat, and then uh, we will then move in somebody else? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me again? Yes. Now I can hear you. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Um, we've got Bishop S. who says, are there any details yet as to how Gaikai is supposed to work? Um, how worried are we that it'll get choppy? Will there be save files? Will you be able to access the online multiplayer? Thank you for that question. Uh, here's the thing. I'm excited about Gaikai. I've known Dave Perry for a very, very long time, and I think he's a very ambitious and very creative mind, and uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens. That is kind of where I've been saying that we don't know what the story is on both of these consoles. It's because Gaikai, we know it will stream games, and we know that like, there'll be some ability to kind of play somebody else's game from a remote location, but they've also said that they're going to be rolling it out over time. And I'm a little concerned with Sony that they can't give kind of a clear picture of what you're getting out of the box, and then how is that going to roll out so that you're seeing the benefits of this rather ambitious and rather interesting service. I, I feel for both Microsoft and Sony that um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of kind of explaining away the level of ambition with both consoles on the cloud. Uh, it's like there's this magical fluffy thing called the cloud that's going to solve all of our problems and we can't get this kind of nitty gritty specifics. We're getting a little bit, and I really kind of enjoyed the, the fact that, that kind of vis-a-vis -vis Titanfall and talking to the developers at Respawn, we get some idea of how they're utilizing the cloud for that game, but in terms of how much is really happening out there, how much can we rely upon that, uh, it, it does for, well, I, I, I guess the proper word is ephemeral. Uh, that is not to say that I think Gaikai or Microsoft service is not going to work. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's a huge step forward. That's where a lot of, I think, the innovation is coming, and they seem to be the most kind of tight-lipped on what those innovations are and how they're going to work and what that means for us, the consumer. Uh, and and, and then that's kind of where a lot of my kind of, you know, stepping back and not making any kind of strong statements as to preference for PS4 and the Xbox One. Uh, with, with that, Nick, do you want to yeah. bring in... Uh, let's bring in Socrates. Yeah, cool. Uh, here is Socrates. Hey, Socrates. Hi. I'm going to assume you're in Greece. Am I right on that? Uh, I'm from Cyprus, but I live in London. Okay, okay, <laughs> bingo. So, okay, at oh. least Cyprus explains away an, an <laughs> awesome sounding Greek name there. <laughs> so, finally, we got somebody who is within. <laughs> 
See, uh, it, it is intended to time catch for uh, for, for this dress to sass. Um, are you a student in London? Uh, yeah, I've just uh, finished my university degree, yeah. Where, 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 where'd you go, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, in the University called Hertfordshire. It's just outside of London, so I'm okay, got it. Within, yeah. I, I, I did a year studying in London many, 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 many years ago at, 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 at the University of London, so I was just curious. <laughs> you don't look uh, a day over 25, Adam. You know what's that? You don't look a day over 25. Oh, you are okay. Okay, send him money. Send him money. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I I don't feel a day under seventy five. Um, <laughs> so, okay, in the UK, how much more is the PS Four and the Xbox One going to be in the, um, in the UK versus the US? The PS Four is three hundred and forty nine pounds. Okay, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, and the Xbox One is four hundred twenty nine pounds. Which is actually four pounds more than the PS3 was when that came out a few years ago. So for us, the Xbox One is probably the most expensive launch console for possibly ever. I mean, well, hold on. with with the PS4 three hundred forty nine quid, that's that's more than four hundred dollars. That's getting close to five fifty, yes. I think. Yeah. 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 Like that, yeah. I mean, how does that sort of change your habits or the habits of other gamers in the UK if? You're already looking at such a massive expenditure just to get the console. Obviously, you need some games to go with it. I mean, there's, I mean, are, are you looking to buy the console one game? Well, I, I can buy a PS4 for three hundred and fifty pounds and two games at forty pounds each, which is our full retail price, and that would still take me to the same price as an Xbox One without any games. So, looking to buy the next gen console, I can buy one with two games and then get PlayStation Plus and get something like Drive Club for free. And then I also have all the free MMOs on a PS4 like Planet Side and Warframe, or I can get an Xbox One and then have to spend even more. And it's mm -hmm. financially the PS4 is a much more appealing long-term system. Um, I have to ask: Are, are you a? I'll say the right word: football fan. So yeah, yeah, football, soccer, yeah, I am. So, yeah, and, and, and Eve's, I'm going to come back to you because I want to hear your opinion on this as well. And anyone who's a, 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 an international fan of of, uh, of of football, I would love to hear this. The decision to have that one particular piece of content unique to FIFA on the Xbox One is that significant? I had a hard time trying to kind of contextualize that. Um, we don't really know what the content is so far. It, there's a specific mode that they say they will have content for. I think but it's I think, also the trading card mode or something like that. It's a... It's a sorry. <laughs> oh, no, something's more important. I've seen you there. there <laughs> it's, a, it's a mode where effectively you create your own team with different players, and it's a very popular mode. But I think with the consoles, especially with the social aspect, it's more of where my friends are going to be. So is everyone going to jump on the PS4? I'm, I'm going to want to play something like a Destiny with my friends, and... I can, FIFA for me is more of a single player thing, but that's my only personal preference. Mm -hmm. okay. I think for, for a lot of people, they will jump on the Xbox One, but I'm more of a single player kind of guy anyway. But if all of my friends are jumping on the PS4 or whichever one, that's the one I'm probably going to go for. All right. Uh, hey, Eves, I, I want to come to you. With, with FIFA, uh, I, I hear a young child somewhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are, are, are you a football fan, I assume? No. Oh, look, see, I went and stereotyped all Brazilians. He's <laughs> almost like irrational, like, you know, fans of... You know, it's funny, my Brazilian friend also doesn't like soccer that much, so... <laughs> but but you, you're saying, and, like, uh, FIFA had this special mode for Xbox One, but right. uh, everybody I know will play the PS4 because uh, the, the, um, the DRM stuff and uh, because... And the price will be low if we buy uh, not um, not in, in your country, but we buy online. Okay. Got so it. So yeah. everybody will play on PS4, and someone will play on, on Xbox One. But uh, everybody plays FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer on on the the Sony console. Oscar, how 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 important are sports games in Indonesia? Well, for a lot, for a lot of people, uh, they're quite important. A lot of people play FIFA, Pro Evolution Soccer, but I'm not uh, those kind of people. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I completely understand. Oh, Clinton, I, I got to ask you. Um, you know, with, with 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 rugby really being more the national sport and uh, Australian rules soccer. Um, uh, I mean, you, you you guys are kind of woefully underserved. I know there was an EA rugby game. I have no idea if it was good or not because I still don't understand the damn rules of rugby. But yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah. We don't really know too much about rugby in the southern states. I'm in South Australia, oh. but um, 
but uh, soccer yeah, is a really big now because we just got into the World Cup qualifier or something. Something oh, I don't know. I have a couple of I have a couple of friends who are big into FIFA. Your... Pre prepare for the level of despair I have to endure every four years when America is in the World Cup. So right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So my friends are really into FIFA. I, we played at his house a couple of times, and um, they didn't really care about the Ultimate Team thing when I told them. Um, I don't That's really play FIFA that much. Team. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't think I don't think it will have that much of an effect, uh, per, like from the people I know. But obviously, that's just people I know. So I'm not sure. Um, I guess the only other thing I can think of is that uh, on an Australian forum, the Ultimate Team had its own thread, and it was like hundreds of pages long. So I don't know. It could okay. be either way. It's, it's clearly yeah. resonating with somebody. So yeah, yeah, it must have some sort of addictive properties or something. Hey, um, uh, hey, hey, Nick, keep keep an eye out there in the chat for, for everyone out there who's international in chat. I'm curious how important the Ultimate Team thing is being exclusive to Xbox One, and that will uh, have any impact on your buying decision. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people saying um, that, that Ultimate Team is too big for it to actually end up being exclusive uh, to the Xbox One. But so, at the so same time... just skeptical that something that important would just be on, on Microsoft's console. Totally, but on, at the same time, we've got people saying... Oh, Nick... Oh. Oh, you, you, you almost cut out there. Oh, personally. sorry. Yeah, we've got we've got people on both sides of the coin. Though I saw a few comments that were like, "Ultimate Team is stupid." LOL. Who cares? So I feel like <laughs> it depends on the player. Right? <laughs> you know what's cool is if um is if Ultimate Team was more like Marvel Ultimates, and it's just a really really kind of angry, aggressive way of playing soccer, because that would, be um, I would probably catch on in the U.S. <laughs> A little more than football has. Um, so should we let in a uh, a new batch before the end of the show? Yeah, you know what? Let's let let's do that, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for for, for joining. We're gonna bring in a, a new crowd and see um how much more international we can get because this is a lot of fun. Maybe also because it's ten o'clock in the morning. I'm infinitely more awake than I am uh all, all <laughs> bedraggled at four p.m. out here in California. So guys, I am right now in the corner. And and Nick, uh, in the time for for the time being, do you want to throw another question from chat at me? Yeah, no problem. Um, let's see. Uh, Nuked Flounder says, I've seen some specific uproar from Germany about Connect over privacy concerns, but are other countries having similar concerns? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's happening. I mean, uh, it's interesting. I, 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 I'm assuming you mean on the gamer side. There might may, Maybe in Germany there's, some, uh, there's actually some, some legal privacy issues. Like a legal issues. thing, yeah. That's what it sounds like to me, too. Um, I, you know, I, there, there, there's nothing, you know, nothing has gone forward that I know of in the U.S. or any other country with regard to that. Um, I think this may also have to do, and I think fairly so, the European Union is a, a, a little more aggressive when it comes to Microsoft and their policies uh, than the U.S. is in terms of regulating. Um, and I, I, I think they do sort of approach Microsoft with a greater deal of skepticism and the idea that there is this camera that is potentially always on and maybe documenting some type of footage. Um, you know, more power to them to full, fully investigate this and get a kind of more of a forthright legal statement coming out of Microsoft rather than the more of the uh, 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 one that's organized for, for PR. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear from someone named Maggie Nuke Dog? Sure. All right, let's let's do that. Maggie Noop Dog. <laughs> oh, un, un, unmute yourself. Thought I did. Hi, Adam. Is that better? Yes, that's great. Um, um, I'm assuming you come from the long uh, line of the Noop Dog clan. Um, yes. <laughs> we're quite prevalent. <laughs> where 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 are you hailing from? Uh, right now, South Dakota. South Dakota. Oh, nice. It's beautiful out there. <laughs> it's Few Sometimes, people, which is nice, which is nice. Um, so, I mean, what do you like to play out in South Dakota? Uh, mostly single player games. I'm not a big multiplayer game, and that's actually one of the concerns I had after watching E3. There wasn't a lot of single player games. Now, as as, as we were talking about earlier, I mean, is this is, is what's what's your reticence with multiplayer? Is it just the entire idea of multiplayer, or the way in which it's, it's kind of practiced now? Um, you know, it's just a lot of the harassment, especially being a female gamer, oh, no, the I little twelve-year-olds. I feel guilty swearing back at children being yeah. older. <laughs> uh, if they're swearing at you, you put them in their place. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. There's almost that kind of. It's like you're peeling back the curtain and seeing a rather unpleasant look at at least the American psyche of young people, and yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to behave that way. Um, now. 
the, the, I mean, once again, I'm not saying I know this empirically, but I still kind of have this dream that multiplayer that we're seeing in the next generation is one that's a little more passive, kind of closer to what we're seeing in Journey, and it doesn't require headphones or that level of communication if, if, if you're not with friends and stuff like that. Would, would that give you any sense of comfort? Or... You know, no, and especially, you know, with the things like with Snowden and Prism, and I, I am really concerned about my privacy. Uh, my account was hacked a few years ago with the PSN thing. Oh, oh, okay, you got caught up in all of that. I did. Um, I did have my identity stolen, so I tend to be a little paranoid no, with that, I, I, and I, I don't I, like it. So, I mean, do you, th I mean, as a result of that... Does one console look more favorable than the other, or do both of them look too integrated into sort of an online cloud service for you? Actually, I am leaning more towards Sony right now, which, you know, I really like Xbox, Microsoft. I love the control. I really enjoyed a lot of the games, although the last couple of years, the exclusive Xbox has, or Microsoft has had really hasn't interested me, where yeah. Sony has had some really great exclusives as a blade. No, I think, I, 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 outside of just kind of having exclusive content, that I, I look at the exclusive lineup for a console as also kind of defining of the culture of the console. And even when Microsoft has exclusives, and there's nothing wrong with Gears of War or Halo. Okay, I love Gears of War, but... Yeah, I know, no, yeah. But they don't have as clear a definition as when you kind of look at Uncharted, Heavy Rain. There's a sense that, like, that Sony really does invest in stuff that offers a little more diversity. Than, yeah. than what you're getting. I mean, it really, it's Fable that you get out of, of Microsoft, at least this generation, that was doing something slightly different from a yeah. kind of shooter or a racing game. And more mature themes and things yes. that you really kind of make you think once you're done with them instead of yeah. just hitting reload right away. It's, it's sometimes fun to feel like an adult when you're playing a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And on that, let's let 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 let's see who else we can bring in here. Oh, Nick. and by okay. the way, I am a yeah. huge fan, so this is a huge honor to actually be oh, talking thank you to so you. Much. Sorry, a little fan. No, 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 no. no service, no. little lip planning, but I just love you. No, no, that that that's very nice. Thank you so much, Maggie. Well, keep your mic open. Let's let's keep that open, and, and uh, we'll we'll be bringing you back in momentarily. Here's uh, uh here's Mads. Thanks, hey, Mads. Mads. Hey, where are you from? I'm from Denmark. Denmark! We got someone in continental Europe! We did it! Yeah. Continental hey, Europe, we, we landed did it! it. <laughs> um, so I, I think my first question is, I've asked uh, everyone who, who isn't a U.S. citizen, um, how much is PS1 and, uh, and, I'm sorry, PS4 and Xbox One going to be costing you in Denmark? Uh, they haven't really decided on the price because they it differentiate here a lot, but the PlayStation 3 was originally $1,100 U.S. dollars here. Oh, so that's quite wow. a lot. That's double. Um, and, and also, I, it, it just occurred to me, and forgive me for being so kind of myopic there, uh, Denmark is part of the Eurozone, so whatever price you're paying... No, no, we, no, we have our own currency. We oh, have, oh, okay, it is. It, it's still the kroner. Is it kroner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danish kroners, yeah. Yay! Look, I remember something from I don't know what. Probably Lars von Tears. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, what's, what's kind of the reaction then to the new consoles in, in Denmark? Is, is it apprehension, or is there, is there interest that people are going to kind of spend that kind of money that it looks like you might be spending? Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, everybody's looking forward to them, everybody I know at least, so, yeah. Um, and and what's, what's, what's kind of the uh, game of choice, or the, or the game genre of choice in Denmark, or at least among your friends? Uh, it's I I don't play FIFA, but FIFA is really big over here. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with that in mind, I realize that you're not as big a FIFA fan. Does that uh, exclusive for for the ultimate team? Does is 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 that something that might affect people's tastes? Um, yeah, but I don't I don't think because Denmark's really PlayStation country. Everybody owns PlayStation here. Uh, there's very few Xboxes uh, that I know at least that have Xboxes. That I know at least. I, so I don't think it will. A lot of Europe is PlayStation country, and I think I, I think a lot of that has something to do with kind of there is such a clear association between PlayStation and FIFA that you know that you know, I'm wondering if there's even a way that the, the Microsoft can kind of untrain that, in, 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 especially now with all of their problems. Yeah. So uh, since since you finally got somebody in from Denmark, do you, do you, did you come here with any pressing questions or anything like that that the, the group can? Uh, Start to discuss. Uh, n not really, but yo, know, maybe. Um, what do you think about the E, uh, the indie present at E3? Um, you mean uh, primarily with Sony? I mean, there there was, yeah. there were indie games that weren't even in the Sony booth, but they tend to be part of an organization called Indiecade. 
Um, I mean, w w one of the things, and I think it'd be great if we, we we'll, we'll see kind of where people in their territories feel about uh, independent game and in game development. Um, I mean, E3 is still not a terribly welcoming place to the indie developer because it costs a ridiculous sum of money to be on that show floor. Uh, it really does favor the deep pockets of an Activision and EA or Ubisoft. And, you know, it, it's kind of interesting to see that, we, we, you know, indie is now kind of moving in on the backs of the big boys with the big pockets. Um, I, would, I would love to see something that's a little more embracing and maybe a, a, a multi-tiered system to get... With the, the diversity that's actually happening in video games to be represented in what is supposed to be kind of the big showcase for, for what's, what's happening in the video game industry. How, how popular are indie games among you and your friends there in Denmark? Um, a lot of us play a lot of different because they, they bring something different to the table other than the big ones. So they're exactly. more interesting. Um, oh, so we play, I play a lot. Cool, cool, cool. Mads, you, you stay there. We're going we're, we're gonna to see if we can get a discussion going. Hey, Nick, want to bring someone else in? Yeah, cool. I'll bring in, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to say Kyle Barrett. Hello there, Kyle Barrett. Hello. Hello, where are you from? I'm from the UK. Hey, look at that. <laughs> UK, look, we, 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 we finally have a row. Yeah, you guys are getting lucky now. <laughs> <laughs> where are you in the UK? Um, I'm just southwest out of London, near, oh. uh, near Lionhead, near Molecule. Guilford. Got it. Oh, in, 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 in beautiful Guilford. Yes, I once yeah, spent no. the longest Sunday of my life in Guilford. I was out there to do interviews with Lionhead, with Media Molecule, with the guys at Criterion. And uh, the train service into London shut down, or it was very hard to get into London on a Sunday. So I just spent yeah. the entire day in Guilford. I tell you, there's, there's, worse, there's worse places to be, definitely. There, yes, there are. But it just became kind of surreal, where I'm like, I guess I'll have another beer. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, since I ha obviously England loves the football, um, so yeah, if yeah. you don't mind my asking you, in, in terms of that ultimate team, does that have any bearing for you? Does that have any bearing for your friends? For for me, for me, it definitely doesn't. Um, I don't know. Really, you're talking you're talking to gamers here. I'd I'd argue yeah. that there's not a massive cross section between the kind of so, sports so fanatics and. I mean, I mean, and, and, and that's what we see here with American football, that somebody will yeah. buy a console when it's cheaper, two, three years yeah. down the line, yeah. just to play Madden football. And is, yeah, is, I, is, is it fair to look at it that way in the UK? I definitely think, you know, there's still, you know, I've still got friends that will play FIFA on a PS2. You know, I've still got friends that, you know, they're, they're still that far back. So really, FIFA is such a casual thing that I don't think it's going to, it's not going to drive, you know, console adoption. I mean, I, 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 you know, I had considered that Microsoft, once again, was kind of misreading the audience, that who mm -hmm. are the early adopters that are going to play top dollar? Those are people that have an investment in all types of games. Exactly. Not just, yeah, I, I, I completely see that. Yeah. Um, as we were talking earlier kind of about this idea of, of how multiplayer seems to be shifting a little bit in yeah. the next generation, obviously, Internet connectivity is, is quite good. Mm -hmm. In a place like England, as opposed yeah. to you know, our friends in Jakarta and, and, and in the non-urban yeah. sections of Brazil, but are you comfortable with where things are going with multiplayer? Is that where, where you like to focus? No, not at all. Not, not at all. At all. I, you're you're a single-player guy. Um, well, not not entirely. You know, and, and a lot of the games that I'd like to download are yeah, well, they're downloadable. Um, but you know that that for me is such a I don't know it's such a secondary experience. You know, I've not, I've never you know I played Journey, um, but having that integrated to me. You know, I could have played that with an AI character. That that wasn't, I don't know. That wasn't particularly important to me. So I, I don't, I don't. You know, I'm going to have to be sold on it. I think. I I think it's interesting. You bring up a good point. You know, based upon how we were just talking about FIFA, that's not really for the hardcore gamer. And I think, I'm 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 just going to venture a guess. Most of the people that come to address the SAS tend to be a little bit on the hardcore side. Or why would you be wasting an hour of your life doing this? <laughs> Um, yeah, but, I mean, tapping, what, what, trying, what, trying to enter. <laughs> what, what, what you're describing here, and what, what Maggie was describing, is yeah. kind of the sense that, like, I, I think if you really are that core gamer, that early adopter, you really kind of want that solitary experience. Not yeah. because there's something wrong with multiplayer, but I, I, I mean, I, I, I feel that way as well. I tend to see the best explication of a designer's creativity in a single-player game. Yeah, something exactly. like a Skyrim, something like, you know, like a, a Last of Us. Yeah. And I, 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 I once again just really wonder how much game companies are understanding who that initial audience is going to be that's going to be kind of gravitating towards the game. That's obviously the, you know the whole the whole amount of well, the, the I don't want to say mess, but you know it's it's obviously the Xbox hasn't been received brilliantly the Xbox One, and it's just it, it feels like every step has been you know a, a misjudgment of of you know who they you know who are you going for who 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 is going to lay down this huge amount of money you know initially. 
That, 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 that was um, the most wonderful piece of British understatement I've ever heard. The Xbox hasn't been received brilliantly. <laughs> uh, sure, yes, that is a true statement. But yeah. man. <laughs> Could have been received a little bit. <laughs> hey, Nick, uh, let's see if we can get one more person in, because obviously we are getting close to the 11 o'clock hour, and the other problem with doing it uh, in the middle of the day is I do have meetings. I'm going to have to be attending. Oh, cool. uh, do, do, do you want to grab somebody? Yeah, sure. In the meantime, uh, can I throw in one last uh, chat question? Oh, yeah. By, yeah, by all means. Cool. Uh, Rhodes Clark asks, do we tend to ignore the problems of female representation when a game's good? Elizabeth in Infinite isn't exactly the pinnacle of female empowerment, and there are some issues in The Last of Us as well. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I... You know, I, I, I hate speaking with this. Maggie, am I going to put you on the spot if I drive you into this conversation? No, <laughs> not at all. I mean, it, it's one of those where it, it, it's a tough situation. When you have minorities and women who are so underrepresented as characters in the game, when they are represented, it's almost like there's a certain burden that that one character then has to carry as demonstrative of an entire group. Am, am, am I reading that in a way that... that, that what, what do you think? You know, I, I think gaming as a whole is, it's a male-dominated sport. For many years, it's been a white male-dominated sport, and that's yes. who we've seen as the main protagonist. And as the sport has evolved, as we've seen in many other sports and many other outlets, we see more minorities being representative as the protagonist. We see women changing roles, and it's, it's what we've seen throughout history. And while it's been a slow adoption, it, it's there. And you know we don't we're seeing more of characters that aren't so sexualized. We're seeing, yes. and, and I like it. And, and I, Last I, of I, Us yeah. was great. Yes. Elizabeth, I thought was the great character, and I'm happy with it. As, as a 40 year old plus gamer who started with Pong and Atari, I, I'm very happy with what they're doing. And no, no, I think no, there's I, been a little too much. Where's the women that aren't just there? Right. Yeah, yeah, almost, almost as sort of a token representation to just kind of pacify the mob out there. I mean, yeah. I, I think the way I look at it is that Elizabeth and Ellie, uh, one can, it, it, it's a tricky thing because you, 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 you look at the instance and you can see what Elizabeth does in Bioshock Infinite, you see the role that Ellie has and that serves that game well. When you pull back and you look at the macro, we're still not seeing that level of representation of what those those game characters do, and it, it really I I do see it on a micro and a macro level, and there's some legitimacy to that. But I also don't know if I would have enjoyed either of those games if there was sort of you know if, if, if they if they altered the characters. It's, it's, it's unfortunately it's like trying trying to disprove a negative. I think at times. In, in, well, I in feel the same like way that. too. I don't know if I would have enjoyed them anymore if they would have changed them. Even like Mass Effect, you know, where they gave you the option to play as a male or a female. That was wonderful to me. Yeah. And you could change the character. You could play as black or white or I mean Asian. You could and adjust it any way you wanted. Like I, I I think role playing games. I, I, I've seen over time tend to resonate with, with, with female and minority players because you can create a sense of identification because of the opportunities to, to create that character. And I think that's something that is very important, that when you do do a complete single player game, you're making some presumptions and it really, you better make that story really good because you're not, you, you're, 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 on, on the whole, you're only giving identification to the, the white male players that are out there. Nick, um, right. uh, I'm bringing one more guy. Yeah, Thank you for that talking. Oh. Thank you, Maggie. Paul Laporte oh, yeah. Jr. is, I think, our, our final guest today. Paul Laporte Jr. Hello. Hey, where, 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 where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm joining from... Uh, from work? Yes, I am at work. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, so are we. So are we. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, you got busted. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm coming from uh, Utica, New York, uh, so you got somebody from the States, but you did manage to get uh, one of the few people in the States who is a big soccer fan. So, uh, so okay, for you, as an American soccer fan, and, and between you and me, let's say the word soccer, because that's acceptable. Um, sure. I mean, does the Ultimate Team have any resonance to you? Uh, it, it does. Uh, I, I've been playing FIFA for the last four years or so. Uh, it is an issue. I do play Ultimate Team. I don't play it obsessively. It's not my favorite game mode. But the problem with me is the fact that they're taking away something from uh, other consoles, uh, which I'm, I'm pre-ordered a PS4, so that is an issue to me. And I would rather not buy a game that's incomplete by buying... FIFA on the PS4, if they are going to be missing a game mode or some content, I would almost rather make the switch over to the other 
soccer game, which is Pro Evolution Soccer. I'm seriously considering switching to that for the first time in, in years. I'm sure that's not on next generation consoles, the next PES, is it? Yes, it I is. Don't think, I don't, is it? Is this one coming out this year? It is. I, I mean, I also, when, when, it, when it comes to, to sports games, especially when it comes to EA, that first run of sports games on next-gen consoles tends to be a little bit lacking. I think they, they tend to want to invest in the title once there's a, an install base of new consoles so, so they can actually be, be making money yeah. off of that. Um, Paul, since uh, you, you, you are a soccer fan, what happened to your play style when they changed FIFA so dramatically? What was it, about two years ago? With, with, with oh. more of the, with, with, the, with, with the passing? Oh, when they well, it was uh, well, they changed the passing a little bit, but the big change was uh, the tackling, uh, the defensive. It went from just basically holding down a button to just stay on a guy to you really had to time it correctly. Uh, I'm I don't think I'm good enough of a FIFA player to have really had that you know had it be that big of an issue. Uh, but I know that there have been people who have complained quite a bit about it, so much to the point that they are. I've heard that they're considering making changes to that in future ones. But uh, as far as how much it's impacted me. Uh, I'm not a lifelong soccer fan, so I was only in FIFA for a year or two before they made that change, so it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Yeah, I, I, I had some dear friends uh, in Los Angeles who are all Italian at a restaurant called Taroni that I would frequent with remarkable frequency. And yeah, when, 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 that, when that switch kind of came over to, you know, but with, with kind of, I, I, I want to say it was like the touch base passing. Um, they went from thinking they were the best FIFA player to having a rude awakening as to what their skill level actually was. Uh, guys, uh, that is it for this Address Success. This was so much fun. I can easily say we are going to find opportunities to do this again. Um, I, I love kind of how diverse this got. I think a lot of us are very awake as well. And <laughs> I, I can definitely say that for myself. The caffeine is still coursing through my veins. Um, but I, I want to thank you again. We're going to be posting this up if you want to view it later. I want to thank everybody in the chat. And, of course, Nick, thank you very much. No problem. All right, we're going to do this again. I'm going to be in Russia next week, actually. So if there's anybody in chat or who's trying to get in that is in St. Petersburg, Russia, we are attempting to do a uh, meetup at a bar. I have no idea what, what, you know, what a good bar is in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, to just see if we have any sort of Red 3 Games uh, fans out there uh, over there in, 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 in Russia. So uh, feel free to tweet at me at, at Adam Sessler, and we can see if we can arrange something. Uh, so but I will be back two weeks from now a little jet lag, so take advantage of me, and we'll do this all again. Thank you all so very much. Bye. Thanks, Adam.